How you doing guys and girls? It's me, Rob from drumsaword.com here. Good to be back in front of the camera. In this lesson, I'm going to be reading from a script, so forgive me if I keep looking down at my script. It was just to make sure that I get this 100% correct for you. In the second part of the video lesson, I want to introduce you to the full family of notes commonly used in written music, including triplets, rests, and dotted notes. Combined with the previous lesson, this will give you all the tools necessary to read, understand, and even write your own music notation for the drums. Let's crack on then. In the first video lesson, I introduced you to time signatures, quarter notes, eighth notes, and sixteenth notes. We now know that a quarter note is equal in duration to two eighth notes, which in turn is equal in duration to four sixteenth notes. The duration of a note is simply how long it lasts, or how much space it takes up within the bar. I told you that for most written music, a quarter note is used to represent each counted beat of the bar. This is how it's commonly done anyway, especially for drums. So for example, let's say that this bar is four counted beats long, and I want each counted beat to be represented by these quarter notes. Or put another way, the quarter note is going to be equal in duration to each counted beat of the bar. Because of this, the bar is given a time signature of 4-4, four, four, commonly known as common time because a lot of music is commonly written with four counted beats per bar. The bottom number of the time signature represents the duration of each counted beat. So a 4 written at the bottom represents quarter notes. It's worth pointing out that there are only three commonly used numbers at the bottom of time signatures. The first is 4, telling us that each counted beat of the bar is equal to a quarter note. The second is 8, representing 8th notes, and the third is 16, representing 16th notes. But we'll look at those other two in a bit. The top number of the time signature tells you the number of counted beats within the bar. So a bar with a time signature of 4-4 four, four tells us that there are 4 counted beats per bar, and each counted beat is equal to a quarter note. So if a bar of 4-4 four, four is 4 quarter notes long, then a bar of 4-4 four, four can also hold up to 8 eighth notes, or 16 sixteenth notes, or any number of notes with a combined duration equal to 4 quarter notes. Don't worry if this is not making complete sense yet, I'm just getting started, so bear with me. The next common number used at the bottom of, of time signatures is 8, as shown here with this bar of 6-8. The 8 represents 8th notes. In other words, each counted beat of the bar is equal in duration to 1 8th note. And as this bar has 6 counted beats, it means it can hold up to a maximum of 6 8th notes, or any number of notes with a combined duration of 6 8th notes. When counting bars with a time signature of something 8, each 8th note gets its own count. In other words, the 8th notes are, the now, are now the new counted downbeat instead of the quarter note which we had previously. It's important to understand that the relationship between the notes stays exactly the same. So even though we're in 6-8, a quarter note is still equal to 2 8th notes and an 8th note is still equal to 2 16th notes. The only thing that's changed is the counting and that's it. And that's the same for all types of time signatures, whether you're in 4-4, four, four, something 8 or something 16. Quarter note equals 2 8th notes, 8th notes equals 2 8 16th notes, etc, etc. Again, this is really important to understand and does confuse a lot of drummers. The duration of the notes and how they relate to each other is always the same no matter what time signature, time signature we're counting in. At this point, you may be asking, so why would you use different numbers at the bottom of time signatures if the only thing that changes is the counting? This is a big question to answer right now, and I don't want to go into too much detail at this stage. For now, just understand that the various time signatures all have their own uses in written music, and that should do you for now. The final common number written at the bottom of time signatures is 16, representing 16th notes. So this time signature tells us that the bar has seven counted beats, and that each counted beat is represented by, yep, you guessed it, 16th notes. This is a very rare time signature, time signature indeed. Well, for the vast majority of music anyway, we'll ignore bands such as Tool and Dream Theater for now. Just remember that for 99% of written music, roughly, the bottom number is going to be either a 4, 8, or 16, representing either quarter notes, eighth notes, or sixteenth notes, respectively. Let's now take a look at our first new note type in this lesson, the 32nd note. Quarter notes can be split or subdivided into two eighth notes. In other words, a quarter note has the same duration or takes up the same space within a bar as two eighth notes. 
and we know we can subdivide each and eighth note into two more evenly spaced sixteenth notes. This diagram shows the relationship between the three note types or subdivisions we have so far. But what about playing notes faster than sixteenth notes? Well, we can subdivide again by splitting each sixteenth note up into two further notes known as thirty second notes. Thirty second notes get their name because a bar of four four common time can contain a maximum of thirty two thirty second notes. Each 32nd note has three tails, one more than the 16th note and two more than the 8th note. It's useful to remember that a quarter note is equal in duration to eight 32nd notes. So a bar of 4-4 four, four can contain up to four groups of eight 32nd notes. But how are they counted? Well, the 16th note counting system of one eander, two eander is commonly used. But because each 16th note is equal in duration to two 32nd notes, 30 second notes are counted in groups of two. Each, for each 16th note counted, we play two 30 second notes like this. One E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four E and a. Uh. Two played notes per counter 16th. One E and etc. etc. So let's take a look at some more rhythms that contain 30 second notes. Let's start with a relatively simple one. In this bar of 4-4 four, four common time, the quarter note is equal to each counted beat of the bar. So this quarter note fills the whole duration of beat 1. We can see that beat 2 has been filled with 8 30 second notes, leaving beat 3 to be filled with 2 eighth notes, and then beat 4 with another 8 30 second notes. Now I'm going to set the metronome to 50 beats per minute, and each click is going to represent a counted beat of the bar. So each one of those clicks is a counted beat of the bar. We're going to count one and two and. So let's now hear what this bar sounds like when played and counted out loud. So I count myself in. One and two and three e and a four e and a one and two e and a three and four e and a one and two e and a three and four e and a one and two e and a three and four e and 2E and a 3 and 4E and a 1. For our next example, beat 1 has been filled with 8 30 second notes, beat 2 with 4 16th notes, beat 3 with 2 eighth notes, and beat 1 with 1 single quarter note. With the metronome set to 50 BPM again, let's hear this played out loud. 1 and 2 and 3E and a 4E and a 1E and a 2E and a 3 and 4 and 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 and 4 and 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 and 4 and 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 and 4 and. For beat 2 in this example, we can see how 30 second notes can be joined to 8th notes by their tails. These four 30 second notes take up the first half of beat 2, the 1 and the E, and the 8th note takes up the second half, the AND and the UR. Uh. Remember that a quarter note is equal to eight thirty-second notes, so an eighth note is equal to four thirty-second notes, half the value. We will look at, at some more examples of this later in the lesson, but for now notice that the one beam has been used to join the thirty-second notes to the eighth note. Beat four has been written in exactly the same way. So the full bar will be played and counted out loud like this. One and two and three and four and one and two. 2E and 3 and 4E and 1 and 2E and a 3 and 4E and 1 and 2E and a 3 and 4E and 1 and 2E and a 3 and 4E and. In this last example before moving on, the first half of beat 1 has been filled with an eighth note, whilst the second half has been filled with four 30 second notes, taking up the and and the uh of beat one. Beat two contains four 16th notes, whilst only the first half of beat three has been filled with 16th notes, taking up the downbeat of beat three and the E. The rest of beat three has been filled with four 30 second notes, taking up the and and the uh. Again, notice that the 16th notes have been joined to the 30 second notes with a single tail. Here is what the bar sounds like played and counted out loud. One and two and three and four e and a one and a two e and a three e and a four and one and a two e and a three e and a four and one and a two e and a three e and a four and one 
and a two E and a three E and a four and one. We could go on in this lesson and subdivide 30 second notes even further into 64th notes. But for the vast majority of song tempos, 30 second notes are as fast as you're ever likely to play. So that's where we'll stop for now. But what about at the other end of the subdivision table? What about notes longer in duration than a quarter note? If we double the duration of the quarter note, well then we get the half note. So called because each half note takes up the space of two quarter notes or half a bar of 4-4 four, four common time. You can see that the half note looks just like the quarter note but has a hollow note head instead of a coloured one. So a bar of 4-4 four, four can hold a maximum of two half notes or any number of notes with a combined duration equal to two half notes. Right at the top of the subdivision table then, we have the whole note, which is equal in duration to two half notes or four quarter notes or the duration of a whole bar of 4-4 four, four common time, hence the name. The whole note is written as just a hollow note head on its own with no stem. So let's summarize the whole family of note, note subdivisions we have so far. At the top with the longest duration is the whole note, equal in duration to two half notes which are both equal in duration to four quarter notes, which are then equal in duration to eight eighth notes, which are equal to 16 sixteenth notes, which are then finally equal to 32 thirty second notes. Notice the way the notes are written. The whole note is just a hollow note head. Then a stem gets added to, the, to make the half note. Then the head is colored to represent the quarter notes. Then the first tail is added for the eighth notes. And from then on in, an extra tail is added each time we subdivide, subdivide further into 16th notes with two tails and 32nd notes with three tails. Also notice that the duration of the notes are divided by two each time we move down the subdivisions. So a whole note is worth two half notes, a half note is worth two quarter notes, a quarter note is worth two eighth notes, etc, etc. But what if we wanted to subdivide by three instead of just by two? Well, this is what triplets are used for. Triplets tend to scare a lot of drummers when they first start learning to read music because they don't fully understand what triplets really are. Well, don't worry, I'm going to hopefully make things crystal clear for you. Let's go back to our bar of 4-4 four, four common time, containing, of course, four counted beats. If we wanted to play two notes per beat, then we would use eighth notes like this. Likewise, if we wanted to play four evenly spaced notes per beat, then we would use sixteenth notes. So if we wanted to play three evenly spaced notes per beat of the bar, then we use eighth note triplets like this. Each beat of the bar has now been filled with three evenly spaced notes rather than just two evenly spaced notes. A little number three is written above each grouping of notes to indicate that, the, that these are no longer played and counted as normal eighth notes, but are now eighth note triplets. In other words, the number three tells the reader that there are now three evenly spaced eighth notes in this counted beat of the bar instead of just two. Eighth note triplets are commonly counted as one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplets, with each syllable representing each triplet. Another, another common way to count triplets is one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, but I find that this can be confused with counting 16th notes, and so I prefer to use the first counting system, one triplet, two triplet. So this bar will be counted like this. One triplet, two triplets, three triplets, four triplets, one. Notice that there are three evenly spaced notes per beat. One, two, three triplet, four triplet, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Let's now take a look at where eighth note triplets now fall within our subdivision table. You can see that the eighth note triplets fall in between normal eighth notes and sixteenth notes, and that a quarter note is equal in duration to three eighth note triplets. That's an important one to remember. A quarter note is equal to three eighth note triplets. The quarter note has been subdivided into three evenly spaced notes, so triplets are just another type of subdivision except that they subdivide notes into groups of three evenly spaced notes instead of groups of two. Let's break this down even further so that I can talk about some more common misunderstandings we find with triplets. Here's a bar of 4-4 four, four again. The first three counted beats of the bar contain six eighth notes and the last counted beat contains a quarter note. This bar will be played and counted like this. So one 
and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and nice and simple. Let's now group the eighth notes by their tails into two groups of three like this. It's important to note that nothing has changed to this bar of music. As you hopefully remember from the first video, grouping notes by their tails makes no difference to the way they're played or counted. Grouping eighth notes into threes like this does not make them eighth note triplets. In order to make them triplets, we need to write in the number three above each grouping of eighth notes like this. This now indicates to the reader that each eighth note under the number three is now counted and played as an eighth note triplet. But by doing this, we have also changed the duration or length of the eighth notes, and so this bar now needs to be rewritten to be correct. This is how the bar should be counted. One triplet, two triplet, three and four. And just do it with a click. Two and three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three and four. And one triplet, two triplet, three and four. And tricky to play with a metronome when it's so slow at 50 BPM like that. If we read from left to right, the first beat contains three evenly spaced eighth note triplets. This means that the second grouping of eighth note triplets start on and then fill the duration of beat two. As a consequence, this quarter note now falls on beat three of the bar and not beat four as we had in the previous example. This means that beat four is now empty. We could use something called a rest to fill beat four, but we'll talk about rests later on in this lesson. For now, let's just replace the quarter note on beat three with a half note instead. This now takes up the duration of both, both beats three and four because a half note is equal to two quarter notes. By the way, if eighth note triplets are not all grouped together by their tails, then a little bracket is written to bridge over the affected notes like this. The brackets indicate where each group of triplets start and finish. We will see more examples of this later in the lesson. Let's now look at some examples of bars using various subdivisions, including eighth note triplets. Be aware that if you're not used to hearing them, triplets can sound a little strange at first when played with other subdivisions. Bear with me though, and hopefully they won't sound so weird by the end of this lesson. Be aware that understanding a piece of music notation may be relatively easy, but to ac accurately play it along to a metronome might take practice. So in other words, you know, when you've got a piece of music and it, you know, it might be a really complicated rhythm, understanding it, understanding where each note falls, might be relatively easy when you first start to read, but being able to play that bar of music is something completely different. Here's our first example. Here we see beat one filled with three eighth note triplets, beat two with a quarter note, beat three with another set of triplets, and beat four with two eighth notes, and it sounds like this. One and two and three and four and one triplet two and three triplet four and one triplet two and three triplet four and one triplet two and three triplet four and one triplet two, and three triplet four, and still finding it hard to play in time with that click. Apologies for that. You obviously can practice that kind of stuff, like I should. Okay, let's now move on to example two. For this example, both beats one and two have been filled with six eighth note triplets, beat three with two normal eighth notes, and beat four with four sixteenth notes, and sounds like this. One and two, and three and four and one triplet two triplet three and four e and a one triplet two triplet three and four e and a one triplet two triplet three and four e and a one triplet two triplet three and four e and a and finally in this example beat one contains eight thirty second notes beat two has two eighth notes Beat three contains the eighth note triplets, and beat four has been filled with, so, with four sixteenth notes, and it sounds like this. One and two and three E and a four E and a one E and a two and three triplet four E and a one E and a two and three triplet four E and a one E and a two and three triplet four E and a one E and a two and three triplet roughly anyway.
OK, so we've looked at how we subdivide a quarter note into three evenly spaced notes to produce eighth note triplets. But what about subdividing the eighth note into three evenly spaced notes? Well, we can do that as well. And this is when we have sixteenth note triplets. You can see that each group of three sixteenth note triplets takes up half a beat of the bar. In other words, an eighth note is equal in duration to three sixteenth note triplets. Just like a quarter note is equal to three eighth note triplets, an eighth note is equal to three sixteenth note triplets. Just like the eighth note triplets, we use a little number three written above each grouping to show that these are now triplets and not normal sixteenth notes. Sixteenth note triplets are commonly counted one to to anta to two to to anta to three to to anta to four to to anta to, with each syllable representing each counted sixteenth note triplet. Can you hear that the eighth notes are counted within this counting system, with the syllables tutta used to fill the gaps? One to to anta to, two to to anta to, three to to anta to, four to to anta to. We can hear the one and two and three and four and with the tutta filling in the gaps. Again, you can use any counting system you like, but I prefer this one because it clearly separates itself from the eighth note triplet counting system, and we can hear the relationship between the eighth notes and the sixteenth note triplets really clearly. Another common way to write sixteenth note, note triplets is to group them into blocks of six like this. So that each block of sixteenth note triplets is equal in duration to a quarter note. Remember that because three sixteenth note triplets equal one eighth note, two groups equal a quarter note. When grouped together like this, a number six is written to represent the whole grouping of triplets. It's important to note and remember that nothing changes to the way they're counted or played when joined like this. They are still played and counted as sixteenth note triplets where they're grouped into single blocks of three, two blocks of three, or single grouping of six. In theory, you could also group eighth note triplets into groups of six like this. This would also be played and counted in exactly the same way as eighth note triplets grouped into threes, even though you never see them written like this. But you do find sixteenth note triplets written into groups of six like this. So a bar of sixteenth note triplets would be played and counted like this. Here we go. One stick. One to to anta to two to to anta to three to to anta to four to to anta to one. Now, for the first time in this lesson, let's take a look at the complete list of subdivisions commonly used in written music. These are all of the notes that we're going to read, count, and play in this lesson. This is it. This is the full list of commonly used notes. We start at the top with a whole note, and then move down the subdivisions to find half notes, quarter notes. Eighth notes, eighth note triplets, sixteenth notes, sixteenth note triplets, and then thirty second notes. We can see that sixteenth note triplets fall in between sixteenth notes and thirty second notes. There are other triplets such as quarter note triplets or even thirty second note triplets, but these are less common and so have not been included in this lesson. So don't worry about them for now. At this stage, I want to demonstrate something really cool for you though. If I were to play a bar of each subdivision along to a metronome, one after the other, then you would notice that the speed or rate of the notes that I play increase as we move down the subdivisions. As I play more and more notes per counted beat of the bar, the speed at which I play the notes increases to stay in time with the metronome. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to set the, set the tempo of the metronome to 50 BPM, and each click is going to represent the counted beats of the bar. As I play through the subdivisions, notice the speed of the notes increasing whilst the tempo of the metronome stays constant. Here we go then. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one E and a two E and three E. So, it was the number of notes that I played per click that increased, and not the actual tempo of the music. The metronome stayed constant. 
This is the power of the subdivisions. They allow us to play notes at varying speeds without changing the tempo of the song. This gives us loads of rhythmic possibilities when playing the drums. We could choose to play a drum fill with either 16th notes or 32nd notes, for example, depending on the tempo of the song or what best fitted the music or what you find more comfortable to play, etc, etc. This is why the subdivision table is something I still practice to this day. I like to randomly move from line to line and practice combinations of subdivisions that I find tricky. For example, when I first started, I found moving from 8th note triplets to 16th notes a little tricky, as well as moving from 16th note triplets to 32nd notes and vice versa. So usually moving from 16th notes to triplets or back or 8th notes to triplets and back. I don't know why that is, but I just find those, those combinations tricky to listen to and play, especially at a slow tempo. I still have to concentrate when moving between these two combinations, and it seems to be the same for a lot of other musicians as well that I, that I meet and teach. I highly suggest that you practice running through this table with a metronome. Don't forget to start slow and then gradually increase the tempo over time. These are all the notes that you're ever likely to play, so make sure you learn them off by heart and take full advantage of them, advantage of them in your own playing. Before we move on, let me show you some examples that use various subdivisions, including 16th note triplets. For this bar, beat one has been filled with six 16th note triplets, beat two with two eighth notes, beat three with six, six more 16th note triplets, and beat four with four 16th notes, and sounds like this. One, and two, and three to to and to to four to to and to to one to to and to to two, and three to to and to to four E, and a one to to and to to two, and three to to and to to four E, and a one to to and to to two, and three to to and to to four E, and a one to to and to to two, and three to to and to to four E, and a one. Here's our next example. B1 has been filled with three eighth note triplets and B2 with six sixteenth note triplets. Now, in the first lesson, I briefly told you that any note with a tail can be joined to any other note with a tail, even if both notes are from different subdivisions. So for beat three, we have another example of this. The three sixteenth note triplets take up the first half of beat three, and the eighth note takes up the second half, but both groups have been joined by a single tail. This helps the reader to clearly see that these two groups of notes belong to the same counted beat of the bar by joining them together with their tails, if possible. You can see that the last note here is still a 16th note with two tails, and this note is still an 8th note with one tail. That's important. Again, it just helps to make the bar easier to read. Well, I certainly think so anyway. B4 uses the same rhythm from earlier in this lesson. The four 32nd notes have been joined to the one 8th note with a single tail. This is what the bar sounds like played and counted out loud. One, and two, and three, and four triplet, one triplet, two to to and to to, three to to and four E, and one triplet, two to to and to to, three to to and four E, and one triplet, two to to and to to, three to to and four E, and one triplet, two to to and to to, three to to and four E, and roughly. For this next example, just for fun, I've decided not to join the two groups of 16th note triplets in beat three with a tail. As I've already mentioned earlier, it doesn't matter whether we group them into threes or sixes, they're still played and counted as 16th note triplets. Notice that beat two has an eighth note taking up the first half of the beat, which has then been joined by its tail to the group of 16th note triplets that take up the second half of the beat. The whole bar sounds like this. One, and two, and three, and four, and one and two and to three to and to four e and one and two and to three to and to four e and one and two and to three to and to four e and one and two and to three to and to four e and one. Here's another example where notes of differing subdivisions have been tied together with their tails. The first half of B1 has been filled with a group of 16th note triplets, which have then been tied with together to two 16th notes, taking up the second half of B1. These two 16th notes do not fall under the triplet bracket, or the number three, and so are counted normally, counted and er uh in this case. And remember these from our first lesson? Two 16th notes tied to an eighth note for beat three, and an eighth note tied to two 16th notes for beat four. So let's now hear what this bar sounds like played and counted out loud. One, 
and two and three and four to two and one to two and two and to three and four and one.